Boom. Okay. So if we turn off our light, we can see and we can actually hide our floor too. All of our light is now baked onto all of our objects. Welcome back to Blender Frenzy. I am Justin as always, and we are now going to be adding some light and shadows to our big pile of toilet paper rolls that we have here. So uh, we just got done transferring all of our mesh data uh, to all 1000 and then creating a single pile, which is this thing right here. And it's just one big pile. And we are going to add the lighting in here to cast those shadows. So let's uh, go back to material preview and let's turn on our floor and let's turn on our light. Okay. Uh, but nothing's happening yet. So let's go to the shading and I'm going to get rid of this file browser. I don't need it. I'm just going to collapse this one into the top one there and adjust these accordingly. So we're just going to have to do a bit of prep work here before we can actually start baking as always. <laughs> and so uh, let's go to material preview here. Oh, we're starting to see something, um, but we've got our texture 03 going into our material output now. Uh, I'm just going to actually delete this. So delete that. We're going to delete that and bring our placeholder down. Now the placeholder, I like to bake onto a placeholder before I save it out as an image. That's kind of my workflow. Uh, but we need a diffuse shader. So I'm going to add in a shader diffuse. Uh, you can use the principled. Uh, this is just really quick and simple. We're just doing, you know, white and black and gray images. So I don't really need a lot of information. I'm going to bring that all the way up to white, the roughness all the way up to one, and then connect those. Now I'm using the Node Wrangler, of course. So um, if uh, you don't have that, you'll have to drag this out and pull that in there. But uh, if you have the Node Wrangler, all you have to do is Control Shift and then click, and then it will automatically set that up for you. Okay, so now we have our lighting affecting our objects and our floor. I'm going to change the color of the floor. Well, let's first, uh, let's rename this material. I'm going to actually go to the materials tab over here. So in the drop down here, we've got these two. Um, I think that this one was originally for, yeah, this was the original one for our toilet paper roll, our single toilet paper roll. So I'm going to title this matte TP. And then this one is going to be not TP01, but this is going to be mat for material and then pile. And I got to be careful uh, changing these here. Um, let's see, we make sure that this cylinder, that's uh, our pile here. So that's what's selected and we want that as mat pile. So I'm going to select the floor and it does not have a material. I'm just going to click new. And also I'm going to change this to a diffuse. Now I could delete this and add one in, but if you actually select a node and then press shift S, it'll actually just change that to whatever you choose. So I'm gonna choose diffuse and it just changed it for me. Same thing, roughness all the way up. And then um, actually the color, what I'm gonna do is change it to a nice blue, kind of a, let's turn off our overlay so we can see it. Yeah, something like this. That's not too bad. And maybe a little, little darker, or maybe a little lighter. Yeah, something like that. That's good enough for now. Okay, uh, one more thing I need to do before I bake is you can see some of the rolls are hovering above the ground. Um, so I'm just going to have to select those and pull those down a little bit. But that's going to be a bit tedious process. I'm going to come back over here and let's just go back to solid shaded mode and then select our pile and tab into edit mode. So what I'm going to need to do is select, whoa, okay there buddy, let's uh, and this this whole lock to cursor, I have this lock to cursor, 3D cursor here. You can't see the 3D cursor because I don't have it enabled here, but basically I just move the 3D cursor with shift and then right click and then that moves my screen and then it, that's what the it pivots around i like doing that but it's a little bit wonky and jittery a lot of times so anyway that's if you see me struggling with that that's why okay so i'm going to select all of the ones that are on it their side uh, but before i do that i'm going to 
add a vertex group and I'm going to call it TP on side. And we're just going to be assigning those uh, just so we can select them later if we need to. A quick and easy way to do this is hover over one of the pieces and press L and that will select all linked. Now it's important that you don't have face select mode on. If you have face select mode, you hover over and press L. It will only select those within the seams that you have set. So the seams are gonna be your limitation with face select mode. Make sure you're either in vertex or edge select mode and then hover and press L. And if you accidentally select one that you don't want, it's just shift L to deselect that. So it's gonna be a very tedious process. I'm gonna fast forward through this probably and select all of the ones on the side. Well, not all of them, but all the ones around the perimeter that you can see. Uh, obviously I'm not gonna go underneath and then select all of those because we don't see those. But yeah, I'm just gonna go into top mode and start selecting. Okay, let's go and check that we have um, now I'm gonna with all of these selected so far I'm gonna make sure our TP on side is selected and then click assign here and this is all in edit mode so if you're not in edit mode you won't see that assign and uh, that's just so if uh, we accidentally deselect them and we go about our work and we were like oh we need to get those selected again we can just come back here and select all of them again and I'm gonna go into front mode and find a good candidate i think this is a good candidate here yeah just these here and this here i'm just going to use those as a guide to bring those down so g and then z just bring those down to touch the surface there now you can see some of them going under at certain parts, and I am not concerned about that. Most of them are gonna be occluded from other roles, and even if not, like you really can't tell. And again, if they are, we can just go back and select them again and move them up if we need to, or we can move them up individually if we need to. Okay, I think that's gonna be good. So let's go to material preview mode, and in the drop down, scene lights and scene world, and this is what we are looking at now. And that is pretty cool. That does look like some of them are still hovering over. But they're not. Let's see what that looks like in... Uh, oh, so here's rendered mode. And we need to be in Eevee. Or, I mean, cycles, because we are in Eevee. So cycles for our render mode. And there. Yeah, that looks better. So now it doesn't look like they're hovering. Okay, we have to do one more thing before we bake, and that is, of course, our UVs. So let's go to, uh, da -da. I'm just gonna change this to our solid shaded mode here. And let's go into edit mode. And oh, I need to turn these creases off, bevel off, and then our seams are what we're gonna need. And there we go. So currently we have our flat UV map, and uh, let's go ahead and check this UV sync selection so we can see them. We've got our flat, we've got our flat backup, which that was in case we needed to fall back on. Again, non-destructive workflow. We have our projection from level one. Well, all of these are from level one. Uh, but and then we have our projection our second projection where we fixed in level one now i don't actually don't need these projections anymore and there's a limited apparently i found out there's a limited amount of uv maps that you can have in your list here i don't know how many there are but it's not that many so i'm just gonna get rid of these projections and then i'm going to take our flat and then hit the plus to have a copy of that so if i select that that's an exact duplicate of our flat, but we're gonna change that. So with that selected, in edit mode, select everything and then U to unwrap and then click unwrap and it should do its thing and boom, it's done its thing. Okay, if we zoom in here though, we can see there's too much space between each island. So after you unwrap, you have this option down here. If you don't see this option, just make sure to come here to view and adjust last operation. If I click in here, you can see it's 0 0.001. The smaller you go, the smaller the size between the islands gets. So I'm gonna do 0.3 here, I think. 
and let it do its thing. And there you go. Now the islands are bigger and there's less space. Okay. Now we are ready. Oh, let's uh, rename this to pile because that's for the whole pile and these are for the individual roles. So let's select our pile, come to shading, and now we are ready to bake. We just got to make sure everything is selected the way it's supposed to be. With our UV map, I, I start down at the bottom here and I work my way up. So our pile is selected. That's good. And again, we have to make sure our object itself is selected first. And then our modifiers. So I want to actually make sure that at least the render of our subdivision modifier is on, but I'm going to also enable it in the viewport. And that subdivision is for the baking so we have smoother baking. If I enable my overlays, you can see this is what the subdivision is. And then uh, if I click Optimum Display, that's without it. And the same thing if I, if I just disabled it. So I'm going to enable those subdivisions. And then I'm going to go up to Render Properties. Make sure we're in Cycles Render, of course, because we can't bake an EV. And then my render samples, I'm going to leave it 128. Everything else I'm going to leave untouched from last time. And I didn't really, ch haven't changed anything from the defaults, except for maybe uh, added this transparent here, which we don't really need when we're baking here. And then the bake type, I'm going to choose diffuse. And I'm going to keep all three of these checked. Okay, so we are ready to go here. Just make sure that whatever we're baking onto is selected. So this is an image texture. It's just a blank image texture. You come over here and we can see our properties. If we press N, I'm going to select image and we can see it's generated 512 by 512 blank. The color is black. That's what we're baking onto. Except I am going to change the size of this. 512 is a little bit too small for a thousand objects. So I'm going to type in 1024, enter. Okay, so this is our placeholder. That's what's selected. Make sure it's selected in your node editor here because everything that's going into the material output is going to be baked onto the whatever is selected here. So I'm going to select placeholder. We are ready to go. I'm going to click bake. Let's scroll out here a little bit. One thing that I didn't do, I can do now, but I didn't check to see what that looked like in cycles render before. Um, which is a good idea to do before you click bake, but I think we had everything like we wanted it. Um, I don't know if it's going to actually let me do it. Well, it'll let me do it, but we're almost done baking. But uh, yeah, so this uh, looks this looks like how I want it to look anyway. Uh, no major issues here. Okay, so one thing that I did notice here is if we I forgot to change my margin here 16 pixels we don't have 16 pixels between the UV islands so I'm gonna do that again I'm gonna type in two pixels here because we have so many different items on this and we only have a small space so we're gonna I'm gonna make sure this select it again and click bake again and by the way that's down here our texture baking and it looks like Eh, it's probably it says three minutes but it's going down pretty quickly so okay so this is a little bit more of uh, looks like what we had for our UVs but that is our bake so let's go ahead and plug that right in and now we can see uh, let's go back to material preview and let's go out to our layout uh, material preview out here as well boom okay so if we turn off our light, we can see, and we can actually hide our floor too. All of our light is now baked onto all of our objects. But there are a few problems. Uh, the first one you noticed, you can see this blotchiness, this spottiness. That is because we only have 128 uh, sample sizes. Now we can up those and then wait forever for it to render. But I actually have a better method that I will talk about in another video.